this video, I want to talk about water propagation. Um, it's how I buy a plant and then grow more plants and either sell them to make money for the plant that I already paid for or I give them to gifts as gifts to my friends. Um, it's just really cool too, like if you have little kids, it's cool for them to get to watch the roots grow. It's like a little science experiment. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of having plants because your plants, you can't necessarily water them every day or like do things to them every day. But if you have propagated stuff, you can like fill it up, make sure that they're good, you can check the roots, so it like gives you something else planty to do so that you leave your plants alone and don't water them as much. Um, so I'll talk about the different ways to cut plants to propagate them because some plants you just can't water propagate like that and I'll kind of explain to you why. Um, so we'll talk about how to cut them, we'll talk about how much water you want to be and like what kind of containers you can put them in. We don't drink alcohol so all of my shot glasses are used for plant propagation. Um, we might also talk about soil propagation too, depending on how long this gets, but I might just touch a little bit and then do a whole nother video about it. Um, okay, firstly, where is it? Oh, this guy up here. <clears throat> okay, so this is a heartleaf philodendron. It's a vining plant, so it's a really easy plant to propagate if you're new to propagation. Um, it's really easy for you to see the nodes and know where to cut So I'm gonna I might have to set it down out of view, but I'm gonna cut off like just one of these long pieces Also before I forget I use garden shears I don't use regular scissors just because I feel like They're sharper and they just get in there better, especially when I cut the pilia. I'll show you that in a minute But Let's see so, I'm gonna go in, I think this is a good piece, can you see that? So we're gonna cut this right here, I'm actually gonna cut lower so that it doesn't have this weird piece that like sticks out, so I'm just gonna cut like as close to the soil as I want it, and then we get like this long piece that comes off, and then this is like a bunch of different nodes in one long piece so what you can do is you can either stick this part into the water and then have like this big plant that you're propagating or you can section them up node by node and put each one of them in water propagation I feel like it has a better chance of just like living a longer life and like being more established in the soil if you separate them and propagate each node on its own because then you end up with like eight propagated pieces and you can pot them all together and you'll have like this pretty um, like full pot versus just this guy like sticking out. Does that make sense? It would just be weird like if it was potted in the soil like this versus all of these guys coming out of the soil on their own and it just it would have more roots that way. It would be a stronger plant. So what I like to do is to separate each node. So this right here is the node piece. Each node should have one leaf that comes off. So you just cut on either side. I usually do like half an inch. So we'll cut that part off. We'll cut this part off. And then that's your first node piece. So that's the first separate piece that will go in the water and then the roots will come out of this guy right here. And it's really fast too, honestly. Like you're gonna be really surprised how quickly you get roots like even a few days you can start noticing stuff and it's really fun to watch so there's another piece so then after you separate all of them you'll just have all of these separate pieces that will all grow roots out of the bottom and then you can plant them however you want them like inside of a pot and you'll have a bushy like plant with all of these separate pieces if I was kind of worried at first like where to cut so I'm just gonna keep doing it to every piece so there's your one leaf and there's the node piece so you want just to separate the viney piece on either half so that side this side and then you end up with that like little node piece so then we'll go to the next leaf and there's a node on that one so we'll click on another side another piece so on so forth and then you get this like really pretty 
See, so then you could pot it however you want and it would just look bush, it just looks more full in like an actual plant. That's what nurseries do. They just plant a bunch of plants inside one plant to make you think that like, oh, this is so bushy and healthy, blah, 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 blah. But whatever. So <clears throat> then once you have your separate node pieces, you just take the bottom piece, plop it in water. You can even put multiple ones together. That's what I do because I have too many for however many cups I have in my house. So you just put them all in there like that. And you just want there to be enough, it's hard in this shot glass, but you just want there to be enough water to cover these node pieces. But you obviously don't want the leaves on top to get wet. So as long as those are under water, that means that there's enough. Yeah, you just let that chill like that for a little bit. And it, they still look pretty whenever you're propagating them. Like, I have this little snake plant baby that I've been propagating. It actually has some pretty good roots on there. See, isn't that cool? It's so fun every day to just, like, look at all my propagated stuff and see how much the roots have grown. I think it's really fun. Um, also, whenever you're water propagating, I've heard that some people say that it still needs um, sunlight. And please keep in mind that I'm not an expert. I don't know anything about science. I know nothing. Okay, so I'm going to guess that the leaves also take in sun. So if the roots are dark, it's better for water propagation. In my opinion, this is like my magical propagating little vase. Everything I put in here, within like a week, it's rooted like crazy and ready to go. And I think that's because the leaves still get plenty of sunshine, but the roots are dark and they just go crazy like that so this guy I use for my most favorite propagation um this is I cut off of a piece of let's see off of this plant that my friend Dan gave me it's a marble queen pothos it's so pretty it's like really long and vining I usually hang it above the kitchen table but I clipped off a piece that was hanging up here and I'm gonna grow it and then give it back to him so that we can both have a plant but I think that that's really sweet that you can just cut up any plant, almost any plant that you have, and you can just give it as a gift to your friend. And it's totally free. It costs you nothing, and it's so fun. Um, also, let's cut this guy. So this one's a little bit different than the Brazil. The node pieces look different. So I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of hard. But this piece right here would be the node. It looks, I call it the elbow piece. But it's like that piece right there underneath the leaf where it looks kind of separated. Like it looks like it's shot off from right there. So you could cut below that piece. And there's also one right there. So you could cut underneath this piece and then just stick that guy in water and it'll grow. That's how I grew these actually. Somebody traded me for these cuttings. And you can see it has like new growth coming up. This is a teddy bear plant. The leaves are really soft. I love it so much that I asked her if she would trade me more plants for another cutting of this because I love it. And I've only had it for like two weeks and I've already cut some off of my cutting to give to other people. So it's just crazy how fast they grow and how fun it is. Um, let's see what else. On um, This is another one that I grew. It has a little root. I just want you to see the nubby. Um, it doesn't really matter what kind of water you put in here. Um, sometimes I put fish tank water in there just for fun, but I honestly am not sure if it helps it grow faster, if it does anything at all. Um, I usually just put regular tap water in mine and I've never had an issue. I've all, all my stuff always grows. Um, sometimes you don't need a node piece in order for it to propagate. I've seen people propagate these pilias like that. And sometimes, honestly, it scares me because it's literally just a leaf that people stick in water. Like, the leaf in the stem, they just stick it in water and it just grows roots. Like, that's nuts to me that you can just put a... I'll show you, like, kind of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Cut this guy off. So they literally take this, put it in water, and it grows roots. Like, what? I did not know that for a long time. I thought that it had to have a node piece in order to grow another one, but apparently it doesn't. I'm gonna experiment with this one. We're gonna put it in water and see if it grows. But I have had begonias that rooted perfectly fine and it was no node whatsoever, like just a leaf and a little piece of stem. 
they grew like crazy, no issues, tons of roots. So, I don't know, I don't think, I guess some plants, you don't have to have another. Um, this is a pilia, and you have to cut these a little bit different. Okay, also, you can see that I haven't been rotating this when I water it, because all of the leaves are like, womp, going straight towards the sun. But if I would just rotate it like this, and with the sun facing this way, they would come right back this way and be fine. But that's why it's important to rotate your plants. Um, there's, I really want you to see, there's a lot of babies in here. I'm gonna pull it over. It's also it needs to be watered very bad, so it's pretty upset with me. Let's see. Okay, so all of those little plant looking things, those are all babies that it shoots up. And not all plants reproduce like this, but this one does. And it's so much fun. This is my favorite plant to propagate. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see. You see this big baby right in here? This guy? You The goal is to cut as close to this mama plant as possible and to get like deep in there so that you still have a long root piece on this baby. So I'm gonna just stick my scissors down as close to the mama as I can and then snip it off. And it should come right out. Yep. Okay, so then you're left with like this little piece on the bottom and if you put this part in water or even soil, I've done them in soil, it'll grow into a new plant on its own. And then you can, um, I sell babies of these often for like two for five dollars or whatever, depending on how big they are. But this is a really popular plant. This is the plant that's on the cover of my favorite houseplant book. Um, they are pretty expensive to buy. This one actually was 17 bucks at uh, Kroger. And you could probably pay 17 bucks for like one big mama plant at a nursery. Six months ago especially, like they were so hard to find. They were so expensive and it was like impossible. But I got a little plant, waited for it to grow and then I had a bunch of babies and then I just had a bunch of them. And so I sold them to everyone that I knew. But yeah, I do that often. Um, honestly, I have so many now that I'll probably just start giving them away, like, please take my plant grandbabies because I can't afford to feed them all. It's a little bit crazy. Um, oh, another one that we could cut. This is a string of dolphins. It's kind of hard to see, but they're so cute. The leaves look like little dolphins jumping out of the water. I think they're so cute. Yeah, you can uh, propagate these, but I most of the time soil propagate my succulents because, I don't know, I just feel like succulents don't really like water that much, so it makes more sense. Sorry, I almost fell over. It makes more sense to propagate them in soil. I'm going to prop this up where you can see. So these also have node pieces, but they're just a lot, they're just a lot harder to see. I think I see one right here. Let me. Okay. When I bought this plant, there was a bunch of them that had just fallen off on the car ride home and I posted on the Facebook group and I was like, who wants free cuttings? And I met like three new people because a bunch of stuff fell off my plant. Uh, let's see, these are just like some aerial roots. Okay, aerial roots. Do not get aerial roots confused with root roots because aerial roots are not the same. I don't know what they are. I need to do some, I, I apparently need to do some more research. But I just know that they're not meant to be like under the soil. Does that make sense? They're supposed to come outside of the pot. Like this, um, Monstera has an aerial root that's coming up back here. Yeah, like this guy. It's not meant to go under the soil. It's just, that's, I guess that's why it's called an aerial root because it needs the air, but it, it just hangs out and they get really long and you can either clip them off, like they don't matter at all, or you can let them go. Um, probably just let that guy grow because I think it looks cool cool snake coming out um okay back to succulent propagation sorry uh this is a string of hearts cutting that i have curled up in there and that's how i propagate my succulent so i literally just take this guy like sometimes i'll curl them up before just into a little whatever stick them in kind of push some soil around on top just to make sure that like some of the pieces are covered in soil because you want the roots to grow still. And then just kind of let them do their thing like that. 
as long as I get sunshine. Sometimes I miss them, like maybe once a week or so. I usually wait until I start to see some kind of new growth or like some kind of indication that it's actually starting to root before I spray them. Because with succulents, <coughs> let me show you like this. With succulents, um, you just pluck off the leaves to propagate them. Like this guy, you could just, oh wait, no, not the chicks in hand, sorry, excuse me. My other one, my Haarathia, you literally just pluck the leaves off and then it has little new babies that grow on the top. That's per like, excuse that. Yeah, it gets like these little babies that come up and then when the new plant comes with its own roots, it'll start to like grow straight up towards the sun and then this leaf piece will die off the piece from the old plant and then you'll just be left with the new plant. So you don't need water at all for these and I feel like if these can do it without water I don't see why the other succulents couldn't do it without water so yeah. But this is my succulent graveyard of all of the succulents that I have killed and had to just pluck off the one last healthy leaf so that I could try to eventually save it and make its grandchildren. Um, but yeah, it's got new growth in there. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, you can. That's new. It's just a bunch of, yeah, that's all new guys that came up. Just a bunch of dead leaves of my succulents that I put in here to live again. Um, some plants that you cannot propagate like that, like you can't cut off a piece, put it in water, and let it grow. This guy is one of them. It's a Dracania. I don't know what kind, don't ask me. Uh, it just grows like crazy from the top. These newer leaves or these greener leaves are the new ones. But you couldn't just cut off this leaf and then expect for it to grow off. You know what I mean? Like, it just wouldn't work that way. I think the only way to propagate these is like cell division or maybe they put up pups eventually. I don't know. I need to look up that. Um, another one that you cannot cut and propagate. If you, this is a ZZ plant, um, the Raven ZZ. It's got like these big main stalks. And as far as I know, you cannot just cut this, stick it in water, and then have it propagate. What you would do is you would like unpot it, cut down the middle of these two different bases and then separate the root ball and then plant it separately and then it would just reestablish on its own as two separate plants. That's, that's what I've always been told about these. Um, this guy's the same, it's just a bigger regular version of that ZZ but it has like a bunch of different guys in here and you would just unpot it, cut it right down the middle, separate and then you would have this guy as a new plant. I'm pretty sure that's what this guy did, the guy that sold it to me, he has like his own plant and he just separated some of it and then sold me this piece. Um, that's also, oh real quick, I want to talk about really expensive plants and how the heck people afford it because I'm always like, how are you going to spend 800 like $1,200, $3,000 on a plant that you don't even know is going to live, first of all. Second of all, like for what? But what people do, I'm pretty sure, like unless they're just buku's rich, but what people do is they pay for the plant itself and spend, say you spend $1,200. You spend $1,200 on a pink princess philodendron, you can sell cuttings of it for $300. Cuttings, like literally just cut off a piece of your plant, you can sell that for $300. So if you pay $1,200 for it, and then you sell six cuttings, that almost pay for, that like, you see what I'm saying? It pays for the plant. So it's more like an investment whenever you buy really expensive plants like that. I would never, because I'm too scared to kill it and then you're screwed. Like you just don't have that plant anymore. You can't do anything about it. Uh, yeah, you just lost that whole investment. <clears throat> also, this is my avocado. Also, my hair is everywhere all over the place. I don't know if you can tell, but he's growing in there. Slowly but surely, every single day, he gets a little bit taller. It apparently takes years for you to actually get a tree out of the avocado. And it also probably doesn't help that I can't ever remember to keep it filled up all the way with water. I was like, oh, with my succulents, I'll put them in my room. And when I, when I get dressed and do my hair every day, I'll remember to water them. Joke's on me because I never do my hair. Anyways. Uh, what else do I want to say about water or propagation? 
Oh, um, it's actually good to prune your plants. So pruning is just cutting pieces off, like what we were doing. It's just cutting it back to um, encourage more growth. So like this guy, the same one that I cut off of before. It honestly should probably be growing a lot more than it is, but I forget to water it sometimes. But it's a pothos, so that's fine. It's not neglectable. Um, but I started pruning it back, which means just like cutting off these really long pieces that aren't as, the leaves are a lot smaller and they're just new. So this takes up a lot of energy from the main plant. So if you cut off some of these long pieces, these bigger leaves on top will have more minerals and whatever, more nutrients to grow because the plant doesn't have to put off as much to all of these random pieces. But it's up to you though, like the plant that Dan gave me, this uh, silver, I mean this Marble Queen Pothos, I wouldn't cut this piece to encourage new growth just because like this piece makes the plant what it is, that's what makes it so pretty and why I like it. But if I noticed that the top pieces were getting really sad or like they just couldn't handle like it being so big of a plant, then maybe I would consider propagation. Or if somebody was like, hey, I'll give you 10 bucks for a marble pot for a marble queen prop. I was like, uh, probably okay. But yeah, it's up to you. Like you don't have to cut plants. You don't have to. They can just be long and luscious and do their thing. But if you want to cut them, it's not bad for them at all. It's It helps the plant actually. Because um, they don't have as much extra stuff to have to feed. Um, Okay, we talked about stone cuttings, we talked about that. Um, I think that's it, y'all. I think that's all I have for water propagation. Um, as long as you can remember to keep the roots underwater and keep it filled up, you should be 100% golden.